Hello and welcome to the sixth ever episode of the Unsigned Manager Podcast. My name is Sijikola Kolawole and each week I try and break down football's key topics and headlines to make them a bit easier to understand and to break down what's really happening there. Now with the Euros starting yesterday, I want to take a deeper look into a French academy in the middle of a forest in Paris that seems like it's set to produce the best generation of talent the national team has ever seen. I want to take a deeper look at their processes, their methods and styles and see how they've developed so many players that the French national team is looking like they might dominate the Euros this year. And with that, let's get into the episode. Okay, so I want to give a little bit of a disclaimer before we start. I was born in November of 1999. So I'm only 21 years old, but I'm a big football fan. I think the funny thing about football fans of my age is that we've almost missed out on a golden generation of players. We're not far enough that we don't know about them, but we weren't close enough that we really got to see them firsthand. We didn't really see them at their peak. And highlights and YouTube clips and compilations just don't really give the same the same feeling of watching that player live in his prime doing exactly what he did on, on the pitch. So the best example of this, I think, for anyone my age would be Zidane. I don't think there's anybody <laughs> who's probably born in from 97 to 2000, maybe 2001, who can really say they saw Zidane in his peak. We didn't see it. We missed out. We were in that gap of we were three, four, five years old. You might like football and understand it, but you didn't, you didn't really have an appreciation for what this guy is doing. The, the first game I ever saw Ronaldinho play was a heartbreaking day, 2006 Champions League final in Paris, Arsenal versus Barcelona. And Arsenal lose that game 2-1 and Ronaldinho's great, but it doesn't really compute to me what he's doing on the pitch. Another one, classic one, David Beckham, amazing example. A player that you understand how good he was, but you never really saw it. So what I want to do over the next few episodes probably sprinkle them in here and there, is go back and revisit some of these old players, the old managers, the old teams. Really do in-depth research to work out how good they are. If someone said to me how good was Ricardo Kaka, I have no idea. I can tell you the stats, Ballon d'Or winner, Champions League winner, got to a World Cup, I, I don't know how good the player was. Couldn't really explain to you, he was, he was magical on the ball, he had an amazing touch. I think you could tell you outside of YouTube clips and I think it's hard to to say that because sometimes you don't feel like a, a real fan or like a knowledgeable fan because you haven't done all the research so I want to go back and do that so I might start sprinkling that in the next few episodes I was watching the 2002 Champions League final uh, the other day and some of the talent in the game is phenomenal. I was watching for Zidane to do prep for a future episode, but like Claude Makélélé stood out to me. He stood out to me as the best player on the pitch. I'm like, this guy's like N'Golo Kanté, three inches taller, which is funny because they're both tiny, but like a truck. You can't move Makélélé. Some of the tackles he's putting in, I'm like, why don't I understand how good? because he was playing at his peak in between what 2000 and 2007 and I wasn't really understanding about the game then so just to give you a little bit of a disclaimer I'm not that old so when I start saying things about players normally they're coming from deep research but if there's things you want to educate me on or things people will know about that I don't please let me know but that's whatever this episode is about Claire Fontaine so I want to give you a little bit of a background on what French football has been going through. So over the last 50 years, French football has come incredibly far. And to get a little bit of context and to understand that, Gerard Houllier, who is known as a Premier League manager with Liverpool, good level manager, when he began coaching in 1973, when he began coaching in 1973, French football was still unprofessional. It wasn't a professional game yet. And from then until now, they've become the dominant force in international football, making their mark on the game with a technical and physical style, which when blended together seems impossible to stop. 
if you haven't seen France play over the last 20 years or if you want a good explanation of it this is the best way I can describe it that team can decide to either play like Spain 2010 move the ball really pretty nice patterns small petite play to pull opposition around and and exploit them in the gaps or they can decide to be like Holland in 2010 brutal physical strength speed serious athletes they've like blended that together and put that into their players Paul Pogba has all the maybe not all but is a top level technical player like Xavi and Iniesta but with the size of Virgil van Dijk Kylian Mbappe is as cold a finisher as David Villa with 40% more pace like it's like they've married this style together in the best way possible France have reached the final in three of the last six World Cups and two of the last five Euros which is kind of crazy and have produced some of the world's most talented players over the last generation and it all started back in 1976 Fernand Sastre was the president of the French Football Federation which is like the French FA and I'll probably call it the FFF from now and in the 1970s and 80s he was getting really sick of the international success of the national team because there's rivals like Spain, Germany, England, Italy were competing on the international stage but France weren't good enough they weren't winning anything and they were they were really lacking behind those other countries so Sastre decided to play the long game he said he wanted to create a national institute of football and from that French football could develop and build on the platform to become a powerhouse in European football so Sastre is the head of the FFF and he decides to go with Stefan Kovic who was a Romanian manager and was the guy who took over the famous Ajax team from Renus Mikkels in the 70s so if you go back and you look at the Cruyff uh, Ajax team Renus Mikkels was manager when he left for Barcelona Kovac took the job that's how good this guy was and Sastra and Kovac came together and they began the National Institute of Football Clairefontaine project with Kovac also going to manage the national team so Clairefontaine is the most famous of the 13 elite academies scattered around France which are supervised and managed by the FFF with other similar academies found in like Dijon, Marseille, Rheim and Guadeloupe. So this specific academy, Clairefontaine, is found in the north of France. And it's like it's like something out of Harry Potter. It's basically a remote castle surrounded by miles and miles of forests to limit distractions and it only accepts the best players from the Parisian region. So you can't can't be some normal kid and get into this academy it's only looking for the top top level and it has such a high reputation as one of the best academies in the world and it's produced some exceptional players so before I go into more what Claire Fontaine does let me just let me just show you that this model works successfully so this is the tiers of players that have come out of this academy some of the greatest of all time slash could be so like Thierry Henry easily one of the best strikers of all time French all-time uh, all top scorer one of the best 50 players of all time random number top level player Kylian Mbappe one of the top players in the world could be an all-time great he's only 22 he's scoring a thousand goals a year just players who were like top in their era so Nicolas Anelka one of the best forwards of his time Premier League Golden Boot winner Euros winner with France in 2000 underrated player for his generation even though he did Arsenal really dirty Olivier Giroud World Cup winner Champions League winner second all-time lead scorer for France and he's only six behind Henri it's absolutely crazy as well as that they've also produced some other highly productive players with some really contributing to teams that succeeded at the top level so like a Louis Saha one of a Premier League great like at Fulham at Man United was a bit tougher with the injuries but top level player William Gallas Hatem Ben Arthur world player Abu Diaby, who would have been Arsenal's answer to Vieira leaving if he hadn't got so injury prone, but what an engine. Mehdi Benatia, Blaise Matuidi, World Cup winner, multiple time Champions League finalist. Jeremy Aliadier, uh, who you remember him maybe from Arsenal in the early 2000s. He had a lot of 
a lot of promise, a lot of potential, just didn't really work out. Arsenal moved on to new moves on to Middlesbrough, but good little player. Alain Saint Maximan, <laughs> funnily enough, doesn't really surprise you. He was expelled from Clairefontaine, but the guy's one of the best dribblers in the league, amazing. Marcus Turam, son of French le- legend Lillian Turam, uh, Christopher Nkunku, Rafael Guerrero, Alphonse Ariola. If one country produced that level of talent, They'd be singing their praises. They'd be so excited. Everyone would know about it. Let alone one academy <laughs> that has only been open since the late 80s. And for comparison to that, when you think about the academies who have really produced some of the best players of all time, my mind goes to two in particular. La Masia and the Ajax Academy. And they've been running for so much longer. It makes sense they have an imprint and they're really producing players. La Masia has been open since... 1702 and the Ajax Academy has been open since 1900 Clairefontaine has only been open since 1988 so it's not really a surprise that they're so excited at the level of players they're producing because they've barely been open for that long and they've got generations worth of players coming out at the same time and the level of production at this academy was so strong that the French Federation became so annoyed with overseas managers, particularly Arsene Wenger, for plucking the best talent from the academy rather than letting the players develop in French football. They were getting annoyed because they were like, why are we producing so many players who then aren't able to go and improve Ligue 1 because Arsene takes them early or they get stolen from this team and they're put in that academy. And Gerard Houllier, the former Liverpool manager who worked in the French Federation in the early 90s, he said, and quote, those buildings are more than a fantastic tool. They are a cornerstone, a vision, a philosophy, a place of unity. When they opened, we could not imagine the role this place would play 10 years later. And I think that really goes to show how strong this academy is. And I want to break down a little bit more. I want to get into it and tell you exactly what they do. So let's go through exactly how they produce these players. And I've always found this place really interesting because it was like a well-guarded secret. You didn't know too much about it. They were really hidden. But lately more information has been coming out and I'm really excited to learn about how Clairefontaine works. So the recruiting process goes like this. The best young players in the area are able to apply for a trial with the following criteria. They have to be at least 13 years old, have French citizenship, live in the Ile-de-France region, which is essentially like the Parisian region with a few surrounding towns, and they can't be over 15. Players are then put through a series of trials until a final 22 are accepted each year. So sometimes, I think it was last year or two years ago, there was 450 players applying for a place only 22 were accepted that's how that's how niche and strict and tight they are they want the best of the best so the first set of trials are conducted in each individual area and then the further you progress you will meet up with the other areas until there's a final three-day trial over the easter weekend where players are invited to stay at the academy for their trial for three days and then the final 22 are selected and the rest are told to go away. It's like a boarding school. So players stay at the facility from Sunday night until Friday evening. And then they go home and they play for their local side, see their family, see their friends, and then come back on Sunday night. And I think that was the first thing that really struck me that this place is different. Because in any other professional academy, you don't play for your local team. When you're signed and in that academy, that's it. They don't need to get hurt and it, it was a big cause of topic when I did some coaching courses that we were asking why don't you let players play for their local team because it really disrupts them they can't play with their friends they get less touches on the ball they spend more time in their local area than they do at the academy so why not let them get on the ball as much as possible and there's a, a coach in Clairefontaine that will come at later his name's Andre Morel and he said that his players spend at least 10 hours a week training 
whereas Liverpool's players for the same age spend four and a half hours a week. Apparently, Liverpool players will spend as much time training as like amateur French clubs, but French academies really put their players on the ball and because of that, they're so technically gifted and they're so used to being on it because they spend so much time training when they're younger than they do over here. So when these players are accepted, they then have access to a phenomenal facility which has 132 acres, 302 beds, 10 pitches, which seven of them are grass, three of them are synthetic grass, a sports science lab, a games room, a library, a cinema, so that players are comfortable when they stay there for the week. Because these are, if you think about it, these are only like young kids. These are 13 years old, so maybe, what year, year eight, year nine? So you gotta make sure they feel comfortable and safe and they're with their friends um, and that they can enjoy themselves because a big part of it is that some players might start feeling homesick. So they try and keep a lot of the coaching the same and maintain the, the staff so players are used to them and they make sure parents can come as much as possible. Parents come and watch them play, they go home with them on the weekends so that players don't feel too homesick when they're there and start to lose focus. The coaching at Clairefontaine is elite level so the director is a guy called Jean-Claude Lafargue and he stated that even La Masia have come to watch their sessions as well as a host of other top clubs to understand why the quality is so consistent coming out of the academy. And the Clairefontaine model has been now copied by so many different countries with England starting up St George's Park, Latvia, Turkey and Belgium all now start making similar academies because everyone wants a generation like the French are having right now. So a bit about the training style, all age groups train in a 4-3-3 because the FFF find it the most flexible and the most spacious formation to play in. Year one at the academy aims to increase ball working skills so players need to get better at passing, dribbling, shooting, first touch, all ball stuff. You want, you want your players to become as technically proficient on the ball first. Then year two aims to improve game playing and structural awareness in small sided games so that players can now start understanding how to read situations and scenarios better. If you have a centre back and you want to make him a top level defender, you put him in small sided game first, we can understand how to deal with 1v1s and 2v2s, you do that in small sided game first and then you progress out further so he can adapt that scenario into a full size pitch and that's what happens in year three. So in year three is when team building and tactical knowledge and strategy becomes the priority. Because now your players are looking to leave and progress probably into the men's game or into a top level academy, a top level like club academy, their match understanding has to be at the required level. So they do that later on. So players are building on the foundations. The whole aim is to build on foundations. The afternoon training sessions at the academy are mostly just matches and drills to improve technique and ball skills and to ensure players are fully developing and not just on the pitch, Players are given psychological, medical, physical tests with modern and state-of-the-art technology used to calculate their development. And I think the psychological tests I found really interesting because they give players sports personality quizzes designed for them to solve football issues as well as personality issues. So you don't just have to test a player his knowledge on the game on what he does on it. They give them situations, scenarios. If you were in that, what would you do? How would you think? Because a defender might think differently from an attacking midfielder who might think differently from a winger who might think differently from a centre midfielder. And by doing that, they understand what types of players each player is. So you know what kind of role you could put him in. To give you like a real tangible example, for example, next time you watch Arsenal, watch Mohamed El Nenny. He doesn't ever move the ball forward over about 20 yards. He's not that kind of player. He doesn't want to. Something in El Nenny doesn't want to move the ball that far, and that's fine. So his score on that test would be completely different to like a Granite Shaka, whose mentality wants him to move the ball as far. Yes, technically he's better, but he wants to make that decision. And El Nenny doesn't want to go any near that, go anywhere near that decision. And that's the difference. That's the kind of thing they're testing for. There's medical tests as well, obviously, to teach players about the body, injury prevention, dealing with recovery, height and weight screening, sight and dental checkups, 
Physically, they also test them for fitness, so normal stuff like bleep tests and oxygen intake tests and strength tests. Players are so, so important. Players also need to maintain certain academic levels to ensure their place in the academy. You cannot be in Clairefontaine without studying. There's like a, a partnered school that the, all players learn in, and if the grades aren't good enough, you don't play. And it was really important when I read that, there was a, a quote from a manager who said that, the good thing about Clairefontaine is that they understand that of the players they coach, one in every six will be a full professional. One in every six will make it to the top level. So for the other five, they stress, you guys need to get your education because when this doesn't work out, because it will not work out for all of you, we don't want you to just leave here and not be able to do anything. So they stress education, they stress personal development, they stress physical health, they make sure these players are as well-rounded as possible so that when they leave, no matter what happens, they are able to do something. Claire Fontaine aims to mold their players into elite athletes, getting them ready to join top academies and continue their football journey. The academy aims to produce winners, players best capable of winning, and this is balanced with player development. Rather than a style like La Masio, which has a singular football philosophy that everyone who goes through the academy learns with the aim of getting into the Barcelona teams. No matter who is Barcelona manager, no matter what is happening, more often than not, they'll follow a same style, a same code of ethics, the same football philosophy. And that works okay when you're at a club. Doesn't work well when you're at a, a national academy because you don't know who the French manager is going to be or what club side they're going to join. So Claire Fontaine aims to produce winners. And in that way, a club can decide which type of system or style they want to put that player into. So going back, France World Cup 98, France Euros 2000, they play in two completely different ways. It's only two years apart and it's pretty much the same squad with a few more younger players in the 2000 squad. But they play in two completely different ways. World Cup 98 is defensive solidity first. So that infamous back line that conceded two goals in seven games, all defense first. And then you give Zidane a platform to go and create going forward. And it's kind of like a, like a one-man band going forward with Zidane putting in most of the work. And that's completely different to Euros 2000, which has got more young, creative attacking players like Henri, Anelka, Trezeguet, Perez, all feeding off Zidane. It's, barring a few younger players, it's pretty much the same score, but they play in two completely different ways. One is more physical strength, brutality, defending first with a creative talisman getting most of their goals and making most of their chances and the second one is more free-flowing attacking football because rather than produce for a singular style they try and produce the best players possible and then fit those players around the manager's philosophy La Masia only has one main ideology so a lot of the players that come out of the Barcelona Academy Xavi, Iniesta, Fabregas, Piquet, Puyol all play in similar styles. If you were to go and stick a Puyol in a Premier League team, you're not sure how well he would have fared because the style was very different from what he's used to. Whereas with these French players coming out of the academy, they are more likely to be able to mold into any different style because they haven't been taught just one way. Coaches focus on the improving all round technique decision-making, physicality, and tactical knowledge. The goal, the long-term goal, is to equip French football with the best players. If French football is a film, Claire Fontaine is looking to make the best actors so that the director can use them as he sees fit. And since there's only 22 players accepted per year, there is the opportunity for nurturing and time to grow, and play, but players do need to show improvements. Coaches are strictly instructed. There's no aggressive forms of coaching at all. No shouting, no repetitive criticism, no physical contact. Coaching needs to be constructive, but not aggressive. And all players' objectives need to be relative to their age and their ability to increase their chances of success and improving the player's mentality. I like that. 
You haven't got to be tough and stern with your players at all times. They don't even do that at all. Aim is all on development, development, development. How can I get you to the best possible version of yourself? Claire Fontaine also looks to create a balance between hard work and like a sense of openness and comfort and familiarity to reduce the homesickness in players, keeping them upbeat. Personal development is a massive part and they go back always to the big story of Thierry Henry who struggled at the time of his start there. His parents were divorced. Um, he had real issues with that and when he went to the academy he was a bit standoffish, bit aggressive, not the nicest guy but they knew that there was there was a there was an amazing guy in there and a great player but his personal issues were in the way so rather than shut themselves off to him and just coach him they tried to develop him as a person and they brought him back into the fold and now look at how successful he was and yeah it hasn't all been plain sailing which I'll come on to in a second but I think this level of of dedication and thoughtfulness and time and energy put into your young players is really showing now in the French national team yeah they lost the under 21s uh, they got knocked out kind of early in the under 21s world cup but people were looking at their starting 11 and thinking this team is a team that could compete in Euros Awa, Odson Edouard, Moussa Dembele, Dio Upamecano, Ibrahima Kanate, Edouard Kamavinga yeah not many of even any of those players has come out of Clairefontaine but it's the whole mentality from the French Football Federa Federation that's creating such a crop of young talent coming out of France right now. Is anyone else really close? If you think about how excited the England fans are, which rightfully so, are really excited over the level of young right backs and fresh young attacking talent. Are they really close to what the French are producing? The, the France B team and C team, can England's team really stand up to that? It's just, it's just levels of constant production that it's really really interesting but we do have to go into the bad things the things that haven't worked out so France have made three of the last six World Cup finals and two of the last five Euro finals but the things that haven't worked out have been really really loud and public and messy Gerard Houllier who was one of the biggest advocates for Claire Fontaine said the national team failed at those tournaments because coaches at the academy had started valuing physicality over technical superiority. There were lack of cohesion in the team. Uh, Anelka didn't fare well. Evra had a few bust ups. It wasn't really... The French national team wasn't cohesive at all times. And Clairefontaine sometimes wasn't really the issue. But because the idea was that this one magical place brings the whole team together... When it didn't work out, people started looking at the academy a bit suspiciously. There were real anger from top clubs who were feeling that Clairefontaine was directing their graduates away from their teams. So Andre Morel, guy who was speaking on uh, the Liverpool Academy training hours earlier, he was involved in the Jeremy Aliadier situation. So to give you a little bit of context, Ali Adier is one of the most exciting players out of the academy. Amazing, young talent. He's 15 years old. And Arsenal signed him for 1.2 million, I think the figure is. And the French FA go absolutely nuts. They're not having it. Because they're thinking, why have we put so much time into this young player? And if this academy is so like well hidden, how does anyone know he's as good as he is? we must have coaches who are telling and contacting top teams telling them about how good the players are and then looking for a fee when they sign them so Ali Adia did go on to sign for Arsenal but it was a big big story and Merrell was one of the coaches who was accused of like feeding Arsenal Wenger information on how good the players were so he said and quote football is a small world and today it's all about money but we are not advisors in this respect. We're not agents. We're very cautious about that because when a professional club here can't get a boy to sign with them, they tend to say, ah, oh, well, the coaches at the Institute advise him to go elsewhere. The big clubs want the best young players and when they don't get them, they become suspicious. So he was saying that 
the big French teams are moaning because they couldn't sign him, but it's not our fault. If it was the other way around, Arsenal would be moaning that because they didn't sign him because of us. So it's a bit of a two-way street, but it just it just cast a cloud over the academy at that where the things were getting fixed and another big example was Mbappe rejecting big European academies to go to sign for Monaco instead because Claire Fontaine suggested it. They thought it would best suit his development but again it just doesn't really sit right that they are kind of pushing players to go in specific clubs. Obviously for Mbappe it seems like it's worked out fine and I I would guess that it's out of the best interest of the player but it just doesn't really sit right few other things is that obviously they haven't picked out all the best talent they should have. Anthony Martial wasn't signed by Clairefontaine but he actually was signed by Leon Scouts who were at the Clairefontaine trials and he really impressed them. Uh, Raphael Varane drew interest from Man United after his Clairefontaine trial but he wasn't signed by the academy. N'Golo Kante was rejected because he's too small. There's a few players that they've missed <laughs> that if they would have added them to their graduate list it would have been crazy but overall I think this this setup, this type of academy is probably what everyone else should be looking to do. I think the fact that French football has proven in what 40 years how effective a conveyor belt of talent they can create, I don't see why you wouldn't copy that. They've got players who have been playing together since they were 13 years old who are now playing together in national teams why wouldn't you want to keep that going the idea that like i'm going back to the england national team the idea that reese james and phil Foden and mason mount have all been playing together since they were kids is cool but they've actually all really been competing against each other why not actually have an academy where they're all playing together a big benefit of claire fontaine is that the difference in french football is that the best young talent aren't trained at clubs but they're brought to Clairefontaine because they're actually playing against players who are as good as they are. I think the myth that academy football players are all created equal obviously is dead because not everyone not everyone in the Manchester City Academy was good as Jadon Sancho and Phil Foden and Brahim Diaz. So they, even though they're playing against top level players, they're playing against people who aren't as good as them. Imagine if they were in a Clairefontaine situation, they're actually playing against people who are at their level. How much better could they be right now? For all we know, Mbappe is as good as he is now because the centre-backs he was playing against were at his level. Imagine how good a Sancho could be if he, was, if he was playing against a Foden and a Diaz every week and he had to step, step up his game that much because he wasn't just playing against people who weren't at his level then those players go and sign for a club side how much more developed are they can they get into first team straight away and Mbappe was how old what 17 where he tore up when he tore up Manchester City in the Champions League quarter final he's only been a year removed from the academy imagine if we had Foden and Sancho all stepping out of the academy at 16 and then ready to go in the Prem that would have been that would have been mind-blowing the club scouting academy system works and it seems obviously to work well but if your best competitors are doing something that now they're going into international tournaments and it's like a shock if they don't win think about the brazil team in 2006 and their team in 2002 if you don't know go back and look at how good those look at the players in that squad look at how many players you recognize that's how good they were the French team isn't at that level for player by player talent but it's as much of a shock if the French don't win tournaments because of how well rounded the squad is and the squad is coming from that from players who've been playing together and competing at high levels since teenagers why not keep that going and if you're Germany and Belgium and Spain and England have started doing it now why not compete with that I think this was all stuff that obviously I didn't know nothing about Clairefontaine before I started the research so I got really in depth and really excited because I think the coolest thing about football is that you can try different things and different philosophies but 
it's also a real cyclical sport where someone starts something and it works well then everyone copies and someone finds the antidote and then everyone copies and we all just go round and round in circles but for right now if this France train is looking like they might dominate what the next 10 years worth of international tournaments if you think that Upamecano and Ibrahim Kanati are under 22 under 23 why wouldn't you think why don't we try that so I had a really great time uh, researching things like this and I think I want to really keep this going for the next few episodes I might not be every single episode but I want to start looking at different ideas and methods and philosophies and players and managers and teams and tactics that we kind of missed out well people my age missed out on just because we weren't old enough at the time to understand them so uh one last thought just before i forget i want to do a couple quick euros predictions i just want them documented and recorded so that if these go through i can tell everyone how bright i was and if they don't go right then i can delete them and no one ever know team to win the tournament currently right now i've got france and germany in the final i've got a lot of faith in the german team really like their style really like the young players i think they'll be properly effective i think the fact that Kimmich will probably play right back maybe wing back slightly hurts obviously he's top level in that that area but i would want him in the middle of the park i think if they can move him to the middle of the park and find someone else to put a right back i think they'll be top level I will go with France winning the Euros, Serge Gnabry being top goal scorer, Phil Foden as best young player, probably Germany with the most clean sheets. I'm looking at most surprising player of the tournament being Declan Rice, I reckon he'll be top quality. I reckon best player of the tournament will be N'Golo Conte. And biggest flop might be. I'm not sure about biggest flop yet. I'm not sure about biggest flop yet. But those are my current Euro predictions. If these go wrong, you best believe I'll delete all of these. This was Claire Fontaine. Really appreciate the support, the listening. Um, please keep sharing. Please keep following the Instagram. Really appreciate it, guys. And I'll see you guys next week. Thank you very much and goodbye. <laughs>